Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Aisha Ibrahim. Marking the issuance of the Royal Order to adjourn the fourth session of the fifth legislative term, Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fawziya bint Abdullah Zainal, paid tribute to His Majesty the King, Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa, hailing royal support to the legislative branch of the government. She commended the support of the government headed by His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, during the fourth session of the fifth legislative term. Zainal hailed the contributions and role played by Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, wife of His Majesty the King and Supreme Council for Women President. She valued the strenuous efforts of all members of the legislative and executive authority, the role of the Shura Council headed by Ali bin Saleh al Saleh, and the cooperation of fellow MPs in carrying out the parliamentary responsibilities with dedication and sincerity. She also lauded the role of the national press and media. The speaker announced that more initiatives and programs would be launched in the coming period in addition to local and international parliamentary participation in support of Bahrain's wide-ranging development. Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh al Saleh praised Bahrain's legislative strides ever since His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa launched his pioneering reform project. Al Saleh said that His Majesty the King's royal visions and democratic and development aspirations supported legislative efforts during the fourth and session of the fifth legislative term. The Shura chairman said that His Majesty the King's keynote speeches at the beginning of each session and royal directives represented a key support to legislative work. He commended the constructive cooperation between the legislative branch and the government, chaired by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He also praised the efforts exerted by the Shura Council's members during the fifth legislative term, hailing their dedicated contributions and national responsibilities. As Saleh stressed the importance of the upcoming parliamentary elections, noting that the Kingdom of Bahrain will witness another chapter in its democratic march in the prosperous era of His Majesty the King. Minister of Foreign Affairs Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani received the president of This Is Bahrain Society, Betsy Mattison. During the meeting, they reviewed the joint national efforts in highlighting the pioneering achievements of the Kingdom of Bahrain as a model for tolerance, peaceful coexistence, and dialogue among religious, cultures, and civilizations. They also discussed ways to develop aspects of fruitful cooperation and joint coordination in spreading a culture of peace and mutual respect and rejecting calls for division, fanaticism, religious hatred and racism in various regional and international forums for the good and happiness of humanity. Minister of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning, Engineer Islam bin Abdullah Khalaf underscored the ministry's keenness to spread awareness in regard to building violations through educating developers and citizens on the importance of adhering to the legal requirements for construction. Minister Khalaf indicated that the ministry is represented in the Municipal Comprehensive Center and in light of the decisions of the Ministerial Committee for Development and Infrastructure Projects regarding educating engineering officers through visual media on construction violations. The ministry organized a series of video workshops and put them on the YouTube platform to address the engineering regularities and errors with the aim of reducing recurring errors and educating engineering and constructing offices about work mechanisms and development in the Benayat system. The custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, issued a raft of royal decrees on Thursday. The decrees included the establishment of a commission for the development of Ta'if and for a commission for the development of Al Ahsa, with Prince Saud bin Nahar bin Saud Al Saud appointed as governor of Ta'if, and a new governor for Al Ahsa is Prince Saud bin Talal bin Badr bin Saud bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, also a Prince Saud bin. Abdul Rahman bin Nasr bin Saud Al Saud as appointed as deputy emir of the Northern Borders province, while Prince Saud bin Abdullah bin Mansour bin Abdullah bin Jawali Al Saud is appointed as governor of Jeddah. 
The current Umrah season for Muslims traveling to Saudi Arabia from outside the kingdom will end on May 31st. The Ministry of Hajj and Umrah has set Shawwal 30th, the current Islamic month that follows the holy month of Ramadan and corresponds to May 31st in the Gregorian calendar as the deadline for overseas Muslims to perform Umrah. The ministry said the deadline for applying to obtain a Umrah visa for those outside the kingdom is Shawwal 15th in coordination with the Saudi Foreign Ministry. It pointed out that Umrah visas for foreign visitors could be applied for through approved online platforms, adding that dates for registration and submission for this year's Hajj would be announced in due course via official channels. The Arab coalition said that a second plane carrying 40 Houthi prisoners released by Saudi Arabia has arrived in Yemen's Aden. Earlier, an aircraft transporting 40 Houthi prisoners landed in Aden. A total of 108 Houthi prisoners will be released in three phases as part of Saudi Arabia's humanitarian initiative aimed at supporting peace and dialogue between the Yemeni parties. Aden Airport is preparing for the arrival of the third plane. All prisoners are expected to be transported to Sana'a. Foreign fighters who fought alongside the Houthis and were imprisoned will be handed over to their current, uh, country's embassies. U.S. President Joe Biden set to announce today that five major U.S. manufacturers have made commitments to boost their reliance on small and medium American firms for 3D printing. The White House said GE Aviation, Honeywell, Lockheed Martin, Raytheon and Siemens Energy have agreed to take part in the program, which Biden will highlight during a visit to United Performance Metals in Hamilton, Ohio. The program is being unveiled by the White House as Biden heads to the industrial Midwest to press Congress to approve a stalled competition and innovation bill that he says is critical to bolstering domestic manufacturing and helping solve a semiconductor shortage.